Aditya 200 Mbps speed deka ke. Sri Lanka ve vegavat masaha pulul tama home broadband sambandh tave vana. SLT Mobitel deshe fiber bala vege opat adam atvidinna. Hari masudui. First at 9 this Friday, the 21st of July, 2023. Neighbourhood First. President Ranil Vikramasinghe highlights the importance of more connectivity with India. Announces plans for power and energy sharing. Ferry services between Talemana, Rameswaran and Nagapatnam and Kankasan today will add more impetus to sea travel between the two countries. Establishing the high capacity power grid interconnection between Sri Lanka and India would enable two-way electricity trade between the two countries. The Indian Prime Minister meanwhile requests to fulfill aspirations of the Sri Lankan Tamil community. Pairaway Samsodhan ka implementation or provincial council elections कराने की अपनी प्रतिबद्धता को पूर्ण करेगी और श्रीलंका के तमिल समुदाय के लिए रिस्पेक्ट और डिग्निटी की जिंदगी सुनिश्चित करेगी डिक्लाइनिंग ट्रेंड NCPI based headline inflation reduces to 10.8% in June from 22.1% in the previous month capable the domestic debt optimization strategy announced by the Sri Lankan government is strong enough to restore the country's debt sustainability, says the central bank governor. In my view, this video and restoring the sustainability is a much more conservative path if you do it right. Passed in Parliament. The banking special provisions bill passed in Parliament with amendments. Alliance Finance Mithuru Run Nai Sevaave Run Pound Kata Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Eel Aadhi Karma Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain Then Lagamethi Pharmacy Inla Baagat Haka This is Adha Verna First at Nine Live from Studio 24 in Colombo Good evening and welcome to Adha Dharana First at Nine. I'm Aditya Dhrisingha joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now in your top story tonight, during his visit to India, President Ranil Vikramasinghe met the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi today and during their discussions, President Vikramasinghe has shared comprehensive proposals for the reconciliation, power sharing through devolution and the northern development plan of the country. President Vikramasinghe said in a media briefing that Sri Lanka sees valuable opportunities in partnering with India in green and renewable energy development and highlighted plans of the development of the Trincomalee port as an energy hub for industry and other economic activities. Furthermore, plans for the construction of a multi-product petroleum pipeline from the southern part of India to Sri Lanka to ensure affordable and reliable supply of energy resources were also revealed. During his first visit to India after assuming office, President Vikramasinghe met with Indian Minister of External Affairs Dr. S. Jai Shankar last evening. In a tweet following the meeting, the Indian External Affairs Minister expressed confidence that President Vikramasinghe's meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will further strengthen neighbourly bonds between the two countries and take forward India's neighbourhood first and the policy of security and growth for all in the region. This morning, President Vikramasinghe called on India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. Following the visit with Ajit Doval, the Sri Lankan head of state met Indian business tycoon Gautam Adani and a series of discussions on a number of projects in the country including continued development of the Colombo port's West Container Terminal, 500 megawatt wind project and extending the Adani Group's renewal energy expertise to produce green hydrogen were held. The next visit of the president during the day was with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Hyderabad House in New Delhi. The discussions were focused on strengthening air, maritime, energy, power, trade, economic, financial and people-to-people -people connectivity between the two countries. We believe that India's growth will be beneficial to the neighbourhood and the Indian Ocean region. In moving forward, I have explained that I have set Sri Lanka firmly on a path of economic reform and that Sri Lanka is already witnessing the stabilising outcomes of these measures and the revival of confidence internally and externally in the progress of the country. I also shared with him the comprehensive proposal I presented this week for furthering 
reconciliation, power sharing through devolution, and the multiple elements of the Northern Development Plan. I have invited all party leaders in Parliament to work towards consensus and national unity on these measures. Thereafter, the government will place relevant legislation before Parliament. We now need to put our economy on a growth path, bringing greater revenue for the country, which requires enhanced investment in all parts of the country. As a supportive and solid foundation for realizing of these objectives, we have agreed on the joint vision of future India-Sri Lanka economic partnership through enhanced connectivity. The recent recommencement of Chennai and Jaffna Air Service is an important step towards the air connectivity. We believe that the expansion of aviation connectivity to other destinations and further development of Palal Airport will complement this initiative. Ferry services between Talemana, Rameswaran and Nagapatnam and Kankasanthure will add more impetus to sea travel between the two countries. We agree that the economic and technology cooperation agreement between Sri Lanka and India is critical to enhance bilateral trade and investment in new and priority areas. And India is currently the top market for inbound tourism for Sri Lanka. Enabling UPI-based digital payments in Sri Lanka would immediately facilitate future growth in this and other sectors. Sri Lanka sees valuable opportunities in partnering with India in green and renewable energy development. In this context, I am pleased to note the conclusion of the Memorandum of Understanding for Cooperation in the field of renewable energy. Establishing the high-capacity power grid interconnection between Sri Lanka and India would enable two-way electricity trade between the two countries. The development of Trincomalee as an energy hub with the support of India is a crucial step towards Sri Lanka's goal to evaluate Trincomalee as a hub for industry and other economic activities. Prime Minister Modi and I believe that the construction of a multi-project petroleum pipeline from southern part of India to Sri Lanka will ensure an affordable and reliable supply of energy resources to Sri Lanka. I am confident that the discussion we had today will lay the foundation for the next 25 years of Indo-Lanka relations and contribute to my vision for sustainable growth, national unity and reconciliation for all segments of people of Sri Lanka. Bharat ki neighborhood first policy. Sri Lanka also has an important place in both India's neighborhood first policy and Sagar vision. Today we shared our visions on bilateral, regional and international issues. We believe that security interests and development of India and Sri Lanka are intertwined. And therefore it is essential that we work together keeping in mind each other's safety and sensitivities. We also talked about reconstruction and reconciliation in Sri Lanka. President Vikramasinghe told me about his inclusive approach. We hope that the government of Sri Lanka will fulfill the aspirations of the Tamils and carry forward the process of reconstruction, equality, justice and peace. We hope the government will fulfill their commitment to implement the 13th Amendment and hold provincial council elections. We also hope that the government will ensure a life of respect and dignity for the Tamil community of Sri Lanka. A stable, secure and prosperous Sri Lanka is not only the interest of India, but also in the interest of the entire Indian Ocean region. I assure you that people of India are with the people of Sri Lanka in their hour of struggle. Following the discussions with Prime Minister Modi, the Sri Lanka President called on Indian President Draupadi Murmu at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Meanwhile, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe assured that the domestic debt optimization strategy announced by the government is strong enough to restore the country's debt sustainability. Addressing an event in Colombo today, the Central Bank Governor said that the Sri Lankan economy has the potential to overperform with growth levels of 4% to 5% adding that it will help to restore the country's debt sustainability in five years without waiting until 2032. The CEO Forum 2023, organized by the Chartered Financial Analysts of Sri Lanka, was held this morning in Colombo under the patronage of Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe. Now that the DDO process is underway, there raises a question of what's next. The government borrowing in the medium term will reduce while the early build of credit to private sector investment will improve, thereby having a positive growth impact. So this is where going forward what we think with the DDO, there will be a lot more domestic resources out of the banking system, financial system will be available for the private sector on a medium to long term sustainable way so that that will provide more resources for the private sector to grow faster and contribute to a real economic growth based on private investment. The new central banking act now it's a law which will ensure our responsibility mandate to domestic price stability and also financial system stability with having a lot more independence and also stronger accountability. So more importantly this act provides what we call the necessary legal framework to adopt flexible inflation targeting regime. So this act would ensure 
the framework would be stable. Central bank ability by law to finance government deficit directly through monetary financing, what we call subscription to tribal auctions by the central bank. Now it is prohibited unless there is extreme circumstances with the approval of the parliament. There are safeguards. Now we have a new structure, monetary policy board and the governing board. Monetary policy board is responsible for monetary policy implementation, which will have more experts in economics and finance, in addition to the standard governing board, which is dealing with financial stability, implementation, operational aspects of the central bank. Someone asked here in the morning whether there will be a second DDO. If we deviate from the path, there could be a DDO. Again, there could be another default of bankruptcy. That's very clear. For example, now, government has committed 2.3% primary surplus. If they go back to what we had, minus 6% primary surplus, then there will be another non-sustainable situation. There could be a need for another DDO. We don't need another DDO because this DDO is quite strong enough and consistent with the targets to restore the sustainability, subject to the fact that other elements of policy, the policy path should also move parallelly. In my view, this DDO and restoring the sustainability is a much more conservative path if you do it right. This is based on the medium to long term growth at 3% on average. But we are seeing Sri Lanka has a capacity to grow easily 4 to 5%. So if you are able to overperform higher growth and stable inflation, our outcome would be performance much better than what we think. And restoring the sustainability, we don't have to wait for 10 years. We can reach it in five years if we perform better. That's what we should target. I think given the, the base outlook is conservative, I think we have room to go for form. Now the National Consumer Price Index-based headline inflation in Sri Lanka has eased further in June to 10.8% from 22.1% recorded in the previous month. The Department of Census and Statistics said year-on-year -year inflation of the food group dropped to 2.5% in May, while year-on-year -year inflation in the non-food group reduced to 18.3%. The rate of inflation as measured by the National Consumer Price Index on a year-on-year -year basis reduced to 10.8 in June this year from 22.1 recorded in May. According to the Department of Census and Statistics, the year-on-year -year inflation in the food group reduced to 2.5 during June from 15.8 recorded in May, while the non-food group inflation subsided from a rate of 27.6 in May to 18.3 in June. For the month of June, the contribution to inflation by food commodities on a year-on-year basis was 1.21%. The contribution of non-food items was 9.59, which is mainly due to increase in value change in the categories of housing, water, gas and other fuels with a contribution of 4.10% and restaurant and hotels 0.59%. As per the latest projections from the central bank, headline inflation is forecast to reach 7% by the end of July and to stabilize around mid-single digit levels over the medium term. Now the Banking Special Provisions Act was passed in Parliament with amendments today, a day after the Parliament passed the third reading of the controversial Central Bank of Sri Lanka bill without a vote. Acting Minister of Finance Shehan Semasing has said that the Banking Special Provisions Act was passed in a bid to make improvements in the resolution framework towards strengthening the financial safety net, also as to ensure the stability of the financial system and protect the public funds and depositors. Banku Visheshan Vidana Panath Ketum Patta Devanavara Kiwi. Me Sambandhe Ngattu Tapi Iye Alut Maha Banku Panath Kiwi Dhrupat Kala. Eka Apiya Sambandha Karaka. Me Ka Tekata Sambandha Vena. But the Banku Visheshan Panath Kiwi Avashya Vena Ma. Visheshan Me Rattaya Samaanne Tathya Tula Neve Yapi. Oh Banku Vidivinana Panath Kiwi Avashya Vena. Namud Banku Navana Moolya Samagam. Paale Kini Ma Kiwi Avashya Vena. Moka Da Eka Tamai Lukku Gata Luwa Kata Tienne. Ekko Me Ka Maha Banku Harita Karan Nohne. Netang Api Raja Eta Yojana Karan Nohne. Vinat Adhikariya Khadan Meka Karan Na Atiyama Atiyama Avashya Vena. Me Vena Kota Ma Maha Banku Vat Mudala Matyan Seat Eka Bad Deva. Banku Navana Moolya Aetana Shakti Mat Kiri Ma Sadaha. Dena Takri Aetma Ka Vena. Dada Sekola Hai Yang Khatali Steka Daran Mudal Vya Paara Panat Sansodhan Eta Avashya Vena. खटी तो मैं पार्लिमेंट तो निर्दिष्ट करना है इतिहास मैं बैंकों नवना मूल्य आए तो ना नियामन है सदा मैं आप ही आधा सम्मत करना मानत के टुम पद तूला पाना सत्य निवागंती है एक रियात्मक वितु आकारे सहाय बाले लबादी में संबंध दें संधान में ना ये दिन है वैद्य आना है ना सीमा तिबिच्च एचएस कोज � 
Indonesia कोमुनत देंग में तो ना दिगंत दिगर साक्षात चाव केनवा में गिया औरुद्दे तिबिच्च तात्ते टा वड़ा में औरुद्दे आर्थिके शक्तिमत आर्थिके होना ही केल में कम इत्तिया वा गैस पोलिंग तेल पोलिंग नतीबा बैठ है भाई यह आर्थिके शक्तिमत तेला नहें गिया औरुद्दे पलवे निमास हातरे अपे अपनाय Mereka urut de, apanai na ada emat kadam wetlati. Tapi anai na adu karno kote, apanai na wedi unana ngarti ke sakti mat kiate. Ne, anai na taduela, apanai na taduela. Hari pahedili, mei ana tatti anu, api thavat anaturu daik tatti kita wetin. Mei banku ucis ijar dana panat. Ie idiripat keru maha banku panat. Api ta khalya tisya api jatka mei ma mei rata awasya mulle mei magapen ni mati ta. An ni awasya ta tamai. Ada api api betunu awasta awe wadat jadiwa kalpana kerala. Hama petekam karu awadane telak kerala kriyatma keran. Insa ada mei api anumata keragan na ucis banku vidu vidana panat ta mei rata mulle sesstre suisal jagdhanya kerite ta kian mam kemati. Join us on the other side of this short commercial break for more news. Kodam ada perali kerana balap bulu angkara. Mahindra Juvo, Timo Betin. Badam aku dai, kodam tamai. Swaraj Tractor, Timo Betin. Ah, apa yang kita lakukan? Apikometras tamai. Madili rasakin nut metalu yang pramukya. Apikometras, sepan ini dah sepan meter. Welcome back. Now, the World Bank's Vice President for the South Asian region, Martin Reiser, highlighted that Sri Lanka has room for improvement in the area of digital connectivity development, being a crucial component of the economy. Speaking to Indi Variamuwatha during our current affairs program at Hyde Park on Adha Dharna 24 during his visit to Sri Lanka, World Bank's Regional Vice President stated that Sri Lanka has much to learn, much to learn rather, from neighbouring India on digital connectivity. Further on the energy connectivity in the region, Martin Reza pointed out that Sri Lanka's renewable energy developments can complement South Indian energy resources. What opportunities does Sri Lanka have here working with our neighbours, especially uh, our region, South Asia, through greater connectivity in the region and also achieving uh, better benefits within the region for a win-win situation? Well, I think there's lots of scope for uh, greater regional cooperation. The, the South Asia region is the region that is least integrated economically of all regions in the world, and that despite the fact that people have close cultural ties and many speak, at least most people speak English, uh, even if it's not their first language. So there are lots of reasons why within South Asia economic connections uh, could be closer. I think for Sri Lanka there's there is a few areas where I see uh, even in the short to medium term, real prospects for improvement. Uh, you mentioned uh, connectivity. One of those is digital connectivity, payment systems. I think, you know, India, which is the big neighbor next door, has developed a really interesting system with individual identification numbers tied to a payment system, tied to the, the, the it, it helps tax administration, it helps build up a more inclusive credit system, a more inclusive financial system. These are all benefits I think Sri Lanka could, could try and learn from that experience. Another example would be in the energy sector, where Sri Lanka has significant potential to develop renewable energies, but so far 
has had very limited development of that sector. Now, it ha so happens that, that, that Sri Lanka's renewable energy potential is complementary to some of the renewable energy resources in neighboring Indian, Indian states. And so by building an interconnection, both sides could benefit. So it would, it would be possible for Sri Lanka to import cheap and most likely renewable power from Tamil Nadu, for example, when they have a surplus, and vice versa, export power surplus from Sri Lanka to, to Tamil Nadu. Now, for that to work, you need a complementary domestic reform. So you need the Ceylon uh, Electricity Board to, to continue in its restructuring and reform effort. You will need an independent regulator. You will need to find a way to connect the Indian power exchange with the regulatory system in Sri Lanka. So there's a lot of work that needs to happen. But the opportunity is, is very significant um, and could provide cheaper power for both sides. So that's another example. Obviously, transport, maritime transport, is a big advantage for Sri Lanka. It has deep sea water, sea water ports that are being used, for example, by vessels from Bangladesh for transshipment. More trade, more open trade regimes could allow Sri Lanka not just to use it for transshipment, but to use the same to then transport its own cargo and bring in more imports and, and, and make its economy more competitive. So Meanwhile, the Colombo Bulls ended in gains today, surpassing 11,000 points for the second day, pushed up mainly by gains in banking, insurance and capital goods industries. The Colombo Stock Exchange All Share Index closed 0.72% higher at 11,016.54 points, gaining for the 15th straight session. Sampath Bank, Selinko Insurance and Melsta Corp were the top gainers on the index, rising 5.2%, 3.5% and 1.3% respectively. Trading volume on the benchmark All Share Index fell to 117.4 million shares from 156.5 million shares in the previous session. The equity market's turnover also fell to 3.3 billion rupees from 4.1 billion rupees in the previous session. Meanwhile, the S&P Sri Lanka 20 index closed at 3,231.83 points rather today, gaining 0.83% gaining from the previous day. The banking sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, followed by the diversified financials and capital goods industries. Foreign investors were net sellers, who stole so stocks worth 24.3 million rupees, while domestic investors were net buyers, purchasing shares worth 24.2 million rupees. Now let's have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Adhadarna First at Nine. Stay in touch with us on www.adhadarna.lk for further developments around the clock. Thank you. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhadarna.lk.